Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. So I'm really enjoying making these baking videos, I thought I'd bring you another one. This time I'm going to make Hokkaido milk loaf. This is a recipe I've made quite a few times, it's really nice, bread for breakfast and stuff like that. So let me show you how I make it. To start this recipe we need to make a simple roux. So to do this I'm taking 3 tablespoons of water, 3 tablespoons of soy milk and 2 tablespoons of strong white flour. I'm just going to mix this together to combine everything and then we're going to need to cook it in order to make a thick paste. When it's combined I'm just going to transfer it to the hob and here we're cooking it on a low heat, just slowly we're taking our time with it and continuing to mix until it turns into a paste. This is the kind of consistency we're looking for, it's so much thicker than it was before. We're just going to set this to one side and allow it to cool while we prepare the other ingredients. So here I've got 110 millilitres of lukewarm soy milk. And to this I'm going to add one tablespoon of instant yeast and one tablespoon of sugar. I'm then going to mix this together and set it to the side. While the yeast's bubbling away, I prepare the dry ingredients. So in this bowl I've got 300 grams of bread flour and to that I'm adding 50 grams of sugar. I'm then going to add one teaspoon of salt and then just mix together until combined. To the dry ingredients we next need to add the roux. But at this point it's quite rubbery and tough and it wouldn't mix in very well so I'm just going to crack the egg that we need to add into the roux then mix it together with a chopstick. You can also use a fork, just make sure it's broken up so that when you do add it into the dry mixture, it incorporates more easily. So here I am just dropping the roux and egg mixture into the dry ingredients. Then just gonna roughly combine them. Most of the mixing together is gonna happen when we knead the dough. So at this point, I'm just looking to roughly combine everything together. As this milk loaf is a type of enriched bread, we also need to add butter. So here I've got 55 grams of unsalted butter that I've gently melted and allowed to cool slightly. And then just mixing it into the dry ingredients just until combined. You can see that at this point, the yeast, milk and sugar mixtures frothed up a lot, which means the yeast is nice and active. I'm just knocking this back down just to make it easier to incorporate later on. And then I'm just going to add this to the rest of the ingredients. Again, just folding it together until roughly incorporated. Now that everything's combined, I'm going to tip the dough out onto a lightly floured surface and just begin kneading for about five minutes or so. The time will depend on how you knead and just how the flour is acting, but you're looking for a nice smooth dough. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. This is one technique that I find useful when kneading dough. So you kind of roll it into a sausage, line the crease up vertically, and then fold downwards like this. And turn the dough 90 degrees and keep repeating that. You can do this one-handed as well. And after all that kneading, we're looking for a dough that looks like this. So it's much smoother. And I place that back into the bowl. And then just cover with some cling film and put it in a warm place for about an hour until it's doubled in size. After an hour, this is how my dough is looking. It's more than doubled in size probably, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get rid of this cling film, lightly flour the top of the dough just to prevent my hand from sticking, and then knock it back. This is just to push out any air and it makes it easier to work with. To properly shape the loaf, we need to first split the dough into three equal portions. I'm doing this with a scale to be as accurate as possible, but what you're watching here is actually a complete failure of an attempt to do this, as I got my maths wrong. I did it properly off camera though. I'm now going to shape each of these portions of dough, which is a really important step. So to do this, I first rolled the dough pieces into a rough ball shape, and then draw the outside into the centre, as I'm doing here, to build up some surface tension. I'm then going to press each dough ball out into a rectangle, making sure that the thin edge is about the same width as my loaf pan. When I've got it to this shape, I'm going to roll the top down to the bottom 
in a tight spiral, pressing everything together, keeping it neat, and then making sure to keep the crease on the bottom, as we don't want the dough to unfurl during proving or when it's baking. Now that I've shaped all the pieces of dough, I'm going to place them into the loaf pan. This is really easy, I'm just going to place them in a line, start with the middle one because it's kind of easier to place, making sure that we put the crease side down so they don't unfurl, and then just slot them in nicely, trying to keep them an even distance apart in all directions. And then once I was happy with the placement of the dough, I put the pan back in that warm spot to prove for about an hour. And this is what it looked like after it proved, you can see it's filled in all the gaps and the dough's risen up. So I take it down for a side shot now so you can see how high it's come. So we're looking for it to be just at the level of the loaf tin. So you can see here that's almost perfect. This is exactly where we want it. At this point you want to preheat the oven to 190 degrees. You want to wait for the oven to be preheated before you apply this milk wash, just so the milk doesn't soak into the dough. My oven was ready to go, so I started to apply the milk wash. Trying to get every single corner, because this is where it's going to get browned. Taking my time with it, you don't want to poke any holes in it or disturb the surface tension we've worked so hard to build up. And when this was on, I placed it into the oven for 20 minutes. And then after the 20 minutes, I took it out of the pan, and this is what it looks like. So it looks kind of like three loaves of traditional old-fashioned bread stuck together on the side and this is the best shot here my camera died but i'll try it again so here it is cracking open the loaf and there's a little bit of steam coming out there it was still hot but i couldn't wait to do it so i just jumped right in it's really soft and springy as you can see here could have proved it for maybe a slight bit longer but this is good enough really nice even brown all over and the inside's nice and soft so here's another shot from the side, there you can see, I think it looks really good, I'm happy with it, it tastes great. So as I said this is really good for breakfasts, I have it quite often, I've got the plum jam from the strange bun video that I'm going to use, and I'll show you in a second actually, I couldn't wait very long, maybe like 5 minutes after taking this picture, the bread was already in the toaster. And this is what it looks like, just one slice looks kind of lonely so I thought I'd make two. It toasts up really nicely, super soft. It's sugary so it's a bit of a naughty breakfast but it's really good. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, this one's really fun to make. If you have a go at it, my Twitter's now set up so please send me pictures. I have five followers on there, I'd like some more. So please come over and show me your bakes, even if it's not something that I've, I've made a video on. If it's anything to do with baking, I'd love to see it. So yeah, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.